All right, so we're doing problem 5A14. Um, we have our givens and our assumptions over here. Um, basically, we have a bar that's inside of this uh, flat plate, and whenever it's released from rest, we need to find the acceleration and the reaction forces at B and A. So we're gonna start out by drawing a free body diagram, which is pretty basic. We just have the bar here. This is point B, point A. And just like how there we have a force coming off to the right, this is F. We have, of course, our weight. Then we are going to have a reaction force here at B, called R, B, X. And then we have another reaction force here at A. This is R, A, Y. And we know that there's only a reaction force going left and right, just the way it's oriented. Same with here, it's only up and down because of the way that the bar is oriented within that plate. And then we need a coordinate system, which is just our basic Cartesian. So we have J hat, I hat. Okay, so for steps three through five, starting with step three, we're gonna write all of our forces in scalar, or vector in scalar form. So we're gonna start with our force given. So we have F equals Fx in the I hat, and then our AY vector equals our Y in the J hat, and then our BX equals our X in the I hat, and then you have a weight force, and that is your W in the J hat. So then for step four, just writing your acceleration equation. So in this case, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna have a g equals a g x in the i, and then plus a g y in the j. So that's it for your acceleration. And then five is writing your sum of the moments, e or not sum of the moments, sum of the forces equals your mass times your acceleration in the g. So f equals m, and this is a g. So for here, you're gonna have it in your scalar equations. So you can have in your j, you're gonna have your ry minus your uh, w in the j, and then equals m times a g y, and then I had f x plus r x equals m a g x. So those are your scalar equations. So that will be equations one and equations two. Okay, so I went ahead and drew just a little schematic of all the forces and the reaction forces because we need to next find our moments um, for the Euler's equation, which is the sum of the moments about G, this IG alpha. Um, so we chose point G just because it gets rid of um, the weight force acting at G. So based on some basic geometry, we were able to find the side lengths here and the distances for the reaction forces so we, the moment is going to be positive. We have R A Y times L over two sine theta plus R B X over two cosine theta. Um, this is going to be negative F L over two cosine theta. And so this whole term is going to be set equal to the IG alpha, and IG is 1 12th ML squared, we have alpha. And all of 
solve this is a scalar equation because it's all in the k-hat direction. Okay, so step seven, we're going to need our kinematic equations because we have too many unknowns for what we're trying to find. So we're going to start with the relationship from A to B. So you can write your acceleration equation from chapter two. So you're going to have your acceleration in A equals acceleration at B plus alpha across your position vector A to B and then your omega squared RA slash B is going to end up being zero because you're starting from rest. So that term completely cancels and you can simplify this to you're knowing your acceleration at point A is going to only be able to go left to right, so that's in the I direction. So you have AA in the I and then you have AB in the J because you can only go up and down. And then your alpha across your position vector, which in this case it's L sine theta for I and L cosine theta for J. And then you can split those into your scalars. So you have your acceleration at A equals your negative alpha L cosine, and then zero equals acceleration at B plus L sine theta. Okay, so moving on, we need to somehow relate this to the acceleration at G because that's all we've known so far. So we're gonna go from point G to B. So acceleration G, acceleration B, plus alpha cross R G slash B. And the omega square term uh, goes out just like it was before, it's still zero. Um, so we, we know we can find acceleration at B using this previous scalar equation. So we know that that is going to be negative alpha L sine theta. And then we, and that is in the J hat direction. Then we are going to break this cross product down. So it's going to be alpha cross, alpha's in the K hat, cross L over two sine theta in the I hat. So L over two cosine theta in the J hat. So when we do this cross product, it's we're finally gonna have acceleration at G equals negative alpha L over two sine theta J hat minus alpha L over two cosine theta in the I hat. Okay, so now that we have all of our equations, we can start plugging stuff in and do some not so simple algebra. But so now that we know our AGX and AGY, because we have our I and J terms, we can come back to our first two equations. You can see they're here, so we can plug those in. So we're going to end up having RY minus W equals M times, and then AG, and this is your Y equation, so it's gonna be negative alpha L over two sine theta, and so this is your J, and then I is gonna be FX plus RX equals M times negative alpha L over two cosine theta. So then you're gonna to wanna to solve these for your R's. So you're gonna end up having R Y equals N times negative alpha L over two sine theta and then plus W and then R X equals M negative alpha L over two cosine theta and that's going to be minus fx. All right, so now you might be wondering, what are we supposed to do? Well, we have our y, we have our x, and we still have alpha as well. We don't know any of those, but we have these two equations, and we have this equation as well. So that's three equations, three unknowns. So we want to plug in our r y and r x to this equation here in order to get it in just terms of alpha. And so, first of all, we're going to take our y, plug it in here, and we're going to get m, m alpha, that's L over 2 cosine theta, and 
defense, all times, whoops. Oh, yeah, that's plus W. And that's all times L over two sine theta. Then we're going to have plus negative N alpha L over two. Oh, so she's out the nine. This should be sine theta here. So this is cosine theta here because we're taking Rx and plugging it in here. Uh, minus F all times L over two cosine theta. This equation is getting pretty long, so I'm gonna bump it down here and say minus F L over two cosine theta, and that's all equal to 1 12th ml squared alpha. And so now we just have alpha, alpha, and alpha, and we'll be able to solve for alpha. Okay, so now that we have this big long equation, to make it easier, we're gonna solve this down in terms of alpha. So it's a lot of algebra, so I'm just gonna write down the final, final step. Doing this, you have to be careful because you have to convert pounds mass and pounds force, you can get them equivalent. So in this case, we're gonna have M times 32.174 times L over two sine theta minus, you're gonna have your force times 32.174 L over two cosine theta, then you're gonna have your minus force again times 32.174 times L over two cosine theta, and that's gonna be all over 1 12th ml squared plus ml over 2 sine theta times L over 2 sine theta then plus W L over 2 cosine theta L over 2 cosine theta so that'll end up giving you your final alpha which once you plug your numbers in your alpha is going to be equal to negative 4.416 Okay, so now we have alpha, and so we're on the home stretch. We're able to plug that into these R, Y, and R, X equations um, to solve for each one of those respectively. So we're gonna have our R, Y is gonna be equal to our mass times negative alpha, which is 4.416. Um, well, actually, that's a double negative because it's a negative here, and then Alpha came out to be negative times L over two sine theta plus our weight force, and this is all divided by thirty-two. And so our Y is going to be sixty-eight point two four, I believe. Yeah, sixty-eight point two four pounds force, and then R X is the same process. So it's going to be our mass times our 4.416, which is alpha L over 2 cosine theta. And this is all over 32.174 because we're trying to get our negative fx here, we're trying to get them both in pounds force. That's going to be negative 15. Point, I think 74, yes, 74 pounds. 74 pounds force. And so we can see back up here that this is going to be pushing over like this at negative 15 pounds. And there's going to be a reaction force here pushing up at 68 pounds while this whole thing is rotating uh, at four gradients of 